You've referred a number of times to uh, what happens in our brain that makes this process of shifting from a, a, a value cycle to a waste cycle and back challenging. Yeah. What is it that happens in our brain? And talk a little bit about bioreaction. Well, bioreaction is a term we use in the communication catalyst that's a short way to stay awake to biological reactions to perceived threats, which is just too long. <laughs> so we say bioreaction. And in working with leaders around the world, we say that your emotional agility depends on you understanding something about the human brain and how it responds to difference. In our firm, we've got lots of people with PhDs in brain science and social dynam dynamics and organizational communication who all have contributed to the body of work around how our brains affect our capacity to connect. If you look at the human brain, it's actually got three subsystems in it. Some people call it a triune brain. There's the brain stem that just keeps us up and running. There's the paleomammalian brain, which is really the emotional center of our brain. And then there's the neocortex, which some people say is more the intellectual domain in our brain. This is a very simple way of talking about it. And in that paleomammalian portion, there is an always-on threat detector. Now, it's associated with the limbic system. It's also associated with something called the amygdala. What it's in there all the time asking is, is this a threat? Is this a threat? Is this a threat? In order to keep you really safe, it's got an important design function. If it's not sure, it's a threat. And that way, I don't have the risk of being wrong very much. Wrong in a way that could damage me. It's actually wrong a lot in the way that damages things other than our bodies, but it's really good at keeping your body surviving. The problem is that the paleomammalian brain, the limbic system, the amygdala, can't tell the difference between a physical threat and a social threat. So if somebody raised a fist to me, those natural reactions come up. The amygdala, what Daniel Goleman in Emotional Intelligence calls the emotional intelligence amygdala hijack, takes over us. And then you only have four options available to you. Am I going to fight, flee, freeze, or appease? Most people have heard about fight, flee. Those happen really fast for us. But also there's freeze. There's the whole system just shuts down and appease, which is actually false agreement with power to avoid threat. You see small animals expose their stomachs to large animals, and you see people in meetings agree to things they don't mean. <laughs> because they're afraid of whoever else is in the meeting and the consequences of having an argument. So all of that's going on all the time inside of the human brain. Emotional agility is the ability to notice that and recover the whole self, recover the whole brain. It's not turn off the amygdala, the limbic system. No, that's very important information, great emotional antenna. There's a lot in there that's really richly contributive and much more contributive if it's also accompanied by the cortex being fully engaged. So a lot of the work we do with people is what are the breathing techniques, what are the questioning techniques that allow you and others to be connected in total. So we're talking cortex, paleomammalian brain, and brain stem, rather than only in part, which is the, I think you're dangerous, I'm gonna have to fight, flee, freeze, appease. So that's the short version of a very large subject, and we deal with it in some depth in the communication catalyst. It sounds like a key distinction, too, between stopping those responses and noticing them. It's a very important distinction. Uh, one, we don't think people are actually capable of stopping them. They come in zero to three seconds, and we ask people all over the world, who hears faster than zero? So let's just say it's at least unlikely uh, there's a lot of work being done now that shows that people are able to control emotional responses more than we ever believe were possible. So I want to stay open to there's an enormous things possible. And if we look at the norm in the quarter of a million people we've worked with around the world, let's just say zero to three second and none of us is faster than zero. So this stuff's going to come up really suddenly. That it comes up so suddenly is something to notice. 
if I can't notice it, I can't do anything valuable about it. So we say the first skill in emotional agility is noticing by a reaction. Because if you can't notice it, you can't do anything about it. The second thing is breathing. It's actually being able to take a deep breath, which can oxygenate the brain, which gets the cortex awakened, and then interested in questions that you can ask, like what just happened and what's important to me right now. We give more detail about that, but it's actually about turning that moment into useful information that re-engages the cortex so you are at your smartest and best to deal with that information. It's not about turning something off. It's about fully engaging yourself in the face of that emotional alert. It's about turning that emotional alert into valuable information rather than something that shuts down our intelligent thinking and gives us that moment where I'm filled with regret and wish I could push the rewind button we talked about earlier. So what I'm hearing you say is look for physiological changes that, that I'm becoming aware of in my own body, the way I'm breathing, um, sensations that I'm feeling as cues or, or clues to the fact that this is beginning to happen and, and now I've got some choices around how I can respond to that. Right. And in the communication catalyst we give much more detail on how people can do that. It's really useful just to pay attention to how do I react to stress? How do I react? Stress is all stress is is concern about threat or potential threat. Unless you're talking about structural stress, like your body being under some sort of structural burden. Given psychological stress is really worry, then it's about threat or potential threat. How do you, what happens in your body under stress? Most people know. I ask people, where do you store tension in your body? Most people can say, oh, in my neck, in my shoulders, in my head, my, great. In the, can you notice when that happens? Take a deep breath and release it. You say that moment right there improves your emotional agility and your intelligence relative to what you're facing. 